Hi and welcome to Grade Guide. This revision video on microscope experiments is directed towards students completing the Junior Cycle Science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. The NCCA learning outcomes for Junior Cycle Science state that students should be able to investigate the structures of animal and plant cells. I break this topic on the microscope down into three concepts that you need to know for your exams, which we'll go through on screen now. Firstly, you need to be able to recognise a diagram of the microscope and label all of its parts. You need to be able to explain the function of all of these parts. And finally, you need to be able to gather and examine both animal and plant cells under the microscope. In a previous grade guide video, we've seen how all living things such as animals, plants and bacteria are made from tiny building blocks called cells. And we saw how these cells are so, so small that we can't see them with our own eyes. So let's discuss how we can actually view these cells. Now, obviously, we can't zoom in with our own eyes to see individual cells. So instead, what we use is something called a microscope. Microscopes allow us to view very small things such as cells. This is what a typical school microscope looks like. And for the exams, you can be asked to label a microscope. So we'll simplify this picture to a drawing and then color code each of the seven parts we need to learn. At the top in blue is the eyepiece lens. In red are the three objective lenses, then the stage, diaphragm, light, coarse focus wheel and fine focus wheel. As with pretty much all diagrams in science, not only do you need to know the labels, but you also need to know their function as well. So what job do each of these parts of the microscope have? The eyepiece lens is the lens that you look through at the top of the microscope, and it's called the eyepiece lens because you put your eye to it. It's just one of the lenses on the microscope that makes cells appear bigger. The other lens that magnifies cells are the objective lenses. Most school microscopes are equipped with three objective lenses, so you can switch between any of these three objective lenses when you are viewing cells. Each of these objective lenses have a different power, meaning one lens will zoom in closer to a cell than the other objective lenses. On this microscope on screen, the lowest powered objective lens has a times 10 magnification. This means that this objective lens makes cells appear 10 times larger than they are in reality. The medium powered objective lens has a times 20 magnification and the high powered objective lens has a times 40 magnification. At any time you're viewing cells under the microscope, you are looking through two lenses, the eyepiece lens and one objective lens. These two lenses work together to make cells appear larger. For example, the eyepiece lens might have a magnification of times 10 and the high powered objective lens has a magnification of times 40. When you look through both of these lenses together, it will make cells appear 400 times larger than they are in reality. The stage of the microscope is the platform where you put the cells you're looking at and they sit on a piece of glass called a glass slide. As you can see, the glass slide is kept secure on the stage with two metal clips. Also, a very small, flimsy, square-shaped piece of glass called a cover slip is placed over the cells, and this stops the cells and objective lens from touching, and so the cover slip protects the microscope. At the bottom of the microscope is the light, and this shines light up through the stage to allow us to actually see the cells. The diaphragm can then control the amount of light that reaches the cells, and we can adjust the diaphragm to make the image we see brighter or darker. The coarse and fine focus wheels move the stage up and down, and doing this helps to make the cells look more clear and less blurry. So that's a lot of labels and functions we've just gone through. Take a few minutes to look at this microscope on screen and make sure you can label and describe the function of each of those seven parts of the microscope. Once you've done that, we can study how to collect and examine cells under the microscope. And this is carried out in two separate experiments. In the first experiment, you will be collecting and examining animal cells. And in the second experiment, you will be collecting and examining plant cells. So let's begin with the experiment to collect and examine animal cells. The animal cells you collect are your very own cheek cells that you retrieve from inside your mouth. The first thing you do is get a cotton swab and gently scrape the inside of your mouth along the inside of your jaw to gather these animal cheek cells on a swab. Then take the swab out of your mouth and smear the cells onto a glass slide. Place a cover slip over the cheek cells to protect both the cheek cells and the microscope. 
and then lastly add two or three drops of a blue liquid called methylene blue to the glass slide. This will make the nucleus and cell membrane really stand out when you look at them. And now for the fun part, examining the cells. Take the glass slide and gently place it onto the stage, securing it with those metal clips. Now remember previously we mentioned that there are three objective lenses, a low power, medium power and high powered one. Swivel to the lowest powered lens first and view the cells through the eyepiece lens. If the image is blurry, adjust the coarse focus wheel and then the fine focus wheel before moving on to the next highest powered lens. What you should be able to view is something like this. Take note of the shape of the animal cells and how they appear jumbled randomly on top of each other, which we'll soon see to be very different to a plant cell. Thanks to the methylene blue we stained the cells with, you can clearly see the cell membrane surrounding the cells, and the very darkly stained dots in the middle of the cells is the nucleus of each cell, which you'll remember from a previous video is where your DNA is kept. So that's how to collect and examine animal cells. Moving on to the second experiment, we'll study how to collect plant cells, and the plant cells we use are from an onion. To gather onion cells, we cut an onion into tiny pieces using a knife and a chopping board. The pieces should be even smaller than what you can see now on the screen. Make sure to always take care when using a knife in the lab. Cut away from yourself rather than cutting towards yourself. Using a forceps, place a paper thin piece of onion tissue onto the glass slide. Once again, cover the onion cells with a cover slip. And instead of methylene blue, we add iodine to plant cells so that they appear more clearly under the microscope. Examine the cells the exact same way that we examined the animal cells. Just make sure that you use the lowest power objective lens before moving your way up to the higher powered lens. What you should see is something similar to this. You can see how plant cells are so highly structured. They all have a fixed rectangular shape and they fit together much like bricks in a wall. If you look closely, you can see the cell wall and the nucleus of each of these plant cells. And that's what you're expected to know about the microscope experiments for your junior cycle science exam. Before your exam, make sure you're well revised on each of these three concepts that we went through at the beginning of the video. Remember to read through your textbook, answer exam style questions, and use this list of keywords from the topic to test your knowledge. Well, that's it for this grade guide video. For more science videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And best of luck with your revision.